Hi, so good day. Thank you very much for uh, tuning in with me. This is Mr. Orban, your teacher in IT. And again, we were discussing module C living online and we are now going to discuss lesson number 16. It's all about understanding email, contacts and calendars. OK, so for the past uh, uh, lessons, we discussed living online and lesson one of this uh, is understanding how the internet works. Uh, lesson two is uh, the reason why we connect to the internet, which is uh, to search, okay, to search information and to gather information. Uh, and the third reason, which was the previous lesson, lesson uh, the second reason, yes, from the uh, previous lesson that you learned is to communicate. So different applications uh, and uh, using the internet, okay, uh, digitally communicate. Okay, but bulk of this communication and uh, we can say aside from, for, from phone calls, okay, the telephone system, which is the backbone of the internet, uh, we have to use uh, communication which is prevalent or even what we call by default most of people who use internet uh, uh, use which is the email okay so even now social media accounts will be used okay uh, will be only used if you have an email account so email is very important for for the digital communication, okay, nowadays, okay, and that's really part of us living online, okay. But uh, today's discussion or this uh, video's discussion, let me just share my screen. Okay, uh, it's all about understanding email. Uh, contacts and calendar. Uh, most of us have been using uh, emails already. So I hope that there will be no issue with you following this uh, lesson and hopefully I'm just going to guide you uh, what are the things that are important for us to know. Uh, again, we have geometric practice that you will see the different type of questions that you might encounter during the exam okay but aside from that i will ask you to practice uh most of the questions are based on gmail okay uh as the email software or email web um applications that we are using or we will use it at uh at this ic3 exam uh, there might be also an Outlook since this is Microsoft base or Windows base. OK, so two email applications, Gmail and which is from Google and uh, Outlook. OK, what are we going to learn? We have to recognize various email programs, understand how an email address is structured, understand email etiquette. OK, uh, create and send a new message to one or more recipients, understand how to attach items to a message, recognize when to reply, reply to all or forward a message. Uh, second part is how we understand how to create a signature. Um, I will not give you an, uh, an exercise for this, but I'll just show you how to do it. Uh, I will use my Outlook. Uh, understand how to deal with spam or junk email, manage mail for deletion or archiving, understand how to manage contacts, understand how to create single and recurring events or appointments. Okay, so this um, right now is the thing, uh, organizing your, um, your schedule using the calendar and it's all connected to, uh, uh, to your email email application if you have a gmail you have a google calendar if you have outlook that we're using at geotech of course you're going to have your outlook calendar okay and manage and share calendars later on now let's proceed uh now 
this is what an email address looks like okay uh, from what you're seeing right now you have your jsmeet at ccilearning.com so jsmeet is your name okay and then at ccilearning.com is the name of the organization and the domain category so the name of organization identifies your your company for example geotech.edu.om and you have a student there so it's going to be easily student.geotech.edu.om easily be uh, identified as a student of geotech uh, the main category uh, this is what usually when you have a server a web server uh, you will have a mail server when you have a web and mail server you're going to apply for uh, a domain okay a domain category which you most likely going to apply through the omentel uh, they're going to lead you since you're they're setting up your connection uh, with the internet in a company so they're going to help you with this domain category or uh, once you are connected you can also look for or apply for a domain uh, on your own you can hook it up on the internet and that's it you're going to find something so, but this is basic when you are setting up a company you need your domain category you need your organization name to be registered okay through the internet and it will show you if you have uh, it must be unique and it they will show you of course they will guide you if you have something uh, that is similar to your or same it cannot be same with others okay uh, for example when you hook uh, try to go to www.geotech.com okay so there is a geotech.com but that's not even related to german university of technology in any part of the world it's geotech some name there uh, it's not german it's just gu and then technology maybe so it's a commercial so maybe a company selling something so, but anyway, so that's what we're, 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 we're saying here. So since ours is that edu.om, so it will be unique, that name geotech uh, in edu.om domain. In Oman, that's why there's an dot om. Okay, an email program. So you can see here it's a Gmail, uh, Gmail program. It's a web-based, it's, um, of course if you're using a mobile phone you can download the applications but an, our example is using the web base in a web browser okay so labels will be in this side meaning folders uh, the equivalent of label in gmail is the folders if you have a yahoo or an outlook you have different folders navigation tools you have the inbox okay uh, of course account applications app options so this is for the gmail you can click this uh, different boxes here and there will he will show you uh, what are the different applications that you go to uh, and then you have the hangouts is the communication tools in google so we've seen that in digital communication lesson number 15 or lesson number three of module c living online okay and let's proceed of course creating new messages where are you going to get that compose okay when you you are in here you click compose then you can have uh, a window for creating new messages so you can put the recipient's name where the to or the destination okay the email address the subject it's very important for us to know this subject uh, it gives the reader uh, a clue on what are you going to email him about okay so do not forget about that it's small uh, if you want detail but uh, not more than 10 words or maybe five words maximum six words like this okay topic or subject of course we have the two we have the subject and then we have the messages the body the message pane or this uh, the whole box that will put the message and you can put a signature it's very important in some way okay in in this ic3 that you know how to create your signature okay and then you have the formatting uh toolbar okay where of course this is the text you can format it with uh, bold capital small uh indentation okay left indent uh, okay or yeah 
and different bullets and so on. Now you have the attached items. You can attach a picture, a file, and so on. Okay, now using the contacts list, of course, when you are in a two, you can click the two, okay, and that contacts list will uh, pop out. So also you can have, uh, you can click it here, okay, uh, when you are, sorry, I'm not sure if you're seeing here this, this side, okay, jmartinez at polano.com. Okay, you can either click your contacts and you can see those contacts there or you can attach or you can, yeah, just include him. Okay, an email address book or contacts, this is a directory of contact information. Most entries include at least a name and email address. So this, you can uh, do this manually one by one as time goes by, you will have your emails. Uh, or if it is an email from the organization, it will be uh, done through the server, okay? So, but personal emails, you're gonna do it one by one. To access the list of contacts from the new message window, click the two, the CC and the BCC. So as I've so shown you here, there will be a two, a word two, okay? In here, you can click that, a word CC, BCC, somewhere here i think okay and then you can click that also okay uh proofing your message uh this is how you a little bit uh take care of your emails or your messages always try to maintain a professional tone in your messages uh except of course you're sending a personal email to your friend uh, but most likely when you are in an organization uh, you're talking to a teacher, to a staff, that professional tone must be there. Sir, ma'am, uh, I am requesting, I would like to request. Uh, so those kind of tone, we don't say, I want to make an exam tomorrow or I, uh, can you please kindly do something or something like this. Uh, run the spell checker, uh, you don't want if you, especially in English, uh, to send messages that has a lot of uh, wrong spelling. Uh, again, I'm telling this, you are, um, uh, you need to proofread, okay, your, your emails. Um, I understand you are all a second language speaker, I mean English as a second language speaker, uh, but still like me also I'm, I'm english is my second language so but that's what it should be i should try my best to proofread uh let those grammars be correct uh, construction of the sentences and uh the spellings we must be careful with the spellings because when you send emails and some words have different spelling and it will give different meaning to your emails, okay? Uh, before you hit the send, before sending that. Okay, you receive an email, you reply, okay? But the reply has options, okay? So you have to be careful also, reply and reply to all. The problem sometimes for most of people, not only students, but staff also, they usually reply to all even if they it's not needed okay replying has to be very careful also where when to whom do you want to reply with or to so that's gonna be uh very important when you receive a message you can reply reply to all or forward okay you can have to know the differences of this reply you send a reply to the sender meaning from okay the person that that is in the from uh, or uh, yeah, that where the email came from. It will come from one person. So if you click that reply, it will go to him or her only, okay? But if you click the reply to all, even those who are in CC, okay? The CC persons will receive the email also. So be very careful. If you don't intend for those persons in the CC, then do not hit the reply to all. Forward, send a copy of the message to someone else. So uh, probably you want to involve somebody 
uh, or to know the email that you, re you that you receive to another person that you have to hit forward. Okay, organizing messages to keep your inbox organized. You can create folders or labels in uh, Gmail and move messages from here to there. I can show you my email. Uh, you have here inbox. I have uh, my classes this term, winter semester 20, uh, this semester, and then I have it last year. Okay, so you can have it now. Uh, yeah, this one is spring, meaning last ter last semester, then the semester before that was win winter semester 2019. Uh, of course, I can create some more, but I already deleted because uh, those are uh, Pass, uh, pass inboxes. So I, 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 uh, sometimes you have to delete. But nowadays, Gmail, Yahoo Mail, or Hotmail, you, they have big inboxes, uh, meaning they can store a big capacity. And like when I was starting uh, 20 years ago with email programs, I have to delete a lot of programs because it can, it can only store maybe how many in megabytes of email. So your email will be full. You cannot receive uh, emails anymore after that. OK, so that's why this was very important before uh, to keep your inbox organized. OK, how about the signature? A signature is a block of text that is automatically added to the end of your messages whenever you create a new message. Whenever you create a new message. OK, so of course you're seeing that when I send an email to you. So example is if I click a new email, okay, you can see this is our signature at Geotech. This is my signature at Geotech. Uh, when I reply, it has something. Okay, you can see, no, that not this one. Okay, uh, yeah, I think this is the one. Okay, so inside the email, I can change this. So this is my official, but when I reply, I only have this kind of signature. Okay, so you can create as many as you want. Okay, but one official can be or will be the one. Okay, uh, you can create this. This is a template uh, that they gave us. So we just copy and paste and we just change the, the picture, the names and whatever information that is in here. Uh, so that's where you're going to get that when you create a new message, but when you are in a file, you can go to options and you can go to mail and you can see here signatures, create or modify signatures for messages. So you have it here. Okay, so similarly, you have to know also from the Gmail side, which I will leave it up to you. Okay, how to uh, create a, a signature. Okay, but that's what signature is all about. Your Outlook also, you can set it up through your Office 365 Outlook. So let's open office.com. Okay, let me just log in. Okay, you go to your Outlook here. So expect that I'll have the same uh, Outlook, which what I opened right now, this one is an application on my computer, okay, on, our, uh, on my laptop, okay? Okay. So I've shown you how to do the signature on my local application. Sorry, this is the Outlook local application. But if you're going to go to your office.com, uh, you can go to maybe settings, yeah, and view all Outlook settings, yeah, from here. And this is the layout. Yeah, compose and reply. So email signature. So here in my Outlook, if I use this, I will use this signature. So you can compose an email signature here. So you can see here, lecturer, foundation program. This is my name. 
Okay, this is where. So it's different when I use the local application. I will have another type of a signature. Okay, so that's very important. You can create as many signatures as you want to create a signature from the top navigation bar. Click the settings button and then click settings or you've seen that from previously. Okay, uh, so attachments, of course, you know how to attach. But in uh, Gmail, there are different uh, uh, options to attach file, photos, emoticon, a link also, and using files in your Google Drive. But in Outlook also, you can insert files. Let me just close this and try to click a new message. Okay, so you can attach through this one. Attach, click, you have browse this computer, browse the cloud, uh, and then of course, picture online, emoticons, uh, editor, and so on. So this is where attachments are. Okay, uh, now you can view the attachments in, in it's a, like a preview, okay? You can have a preview of that, the one you attach usually. Okay, managing spam in an email. Spam is unsolicited email, of course. Uh, it happens because the internet is really an open and to the public location where when, for example, you submitted a CV or a, a resume or even if you just log into another website, okay, then your email addresses can be taken by anybody. So you must likely gonna have to or deal with spam spam email. Okay, most email programs include the filtering feature to block spam or other junk email. Many ISPs also run active, so you can run active spam filters. So even me, I have a junk emails here, but also this is a little bit tricky because not all junk emails are not needed. So from time to time, I'm deleting this. Okay. Surely I don't need those uh, emails, but sometimes you will find that the email that went to the jack are emails that you need. So you have to check also and verify all those things before and you have to open it uh, before you can open it. Okay, so make sure you need that email and open it, but or move it to the inbox. Okay, so that's what junk emails or spam emails are. So I've shown you already example from my junk email, how to deal with junk mails. Now archiving messages are moved. Uh, so these archive messages are moved from the inbox and stored in a separate folder. Archive messages are placed in the all mail label for further action. There's no, there's no limit to the number of messages you can archive. Um, yeah, do I have an archive? Yes. Okay, you can intentionally, intentionally put it on archive. Okay, or by default, there are a setting from, from the email program uh, on how to archive. Or archiving is a an, uh, saving an, an, an email, an old email to another folder. It will keep it. Okay. Uh, deleting messages, you can put it to trash and delete it forever. Uh, and then it's a simple like a file. You put it in a recycle bin first. Uh, if you want, you can delete it, delete it forever also. Okay, now let's we'll go to the, uh, the second part, which is your contact. So most likely, as I said, if it is a personal email, if you're going to create this contacts, okay, one by one, you can develop this. But for Gmail, uh, that's an example for the Gmail. Uh, but for Outlook, this is an example for the Gmail, but I think it's going to be easier for you. So I have here people. OK, so I have my contacts that I can develop, but of course we have uh, contacts from the university also. Okay, we call it global. I'm not sure if that's available here. Yeah, it's here. Global address, meaning it's it came from the university. 
Okay, let's proceed. Now, calendar. Calendar is very important in uh, nowadays. As I said, it's linked to your Outlook. Uh, you send an invitation of a meeting, it will go directly to the calendar. So the same thing that we're doing in Microsoft Teams. Sorry, I have to check that, yeah. Okay, so you are in a Teams, the calendar here is linked to that, okay? So you can set up the calendar here and then once you set up those meetings with the different persons you want to invite, automatically he will send an email. That's why it's very important uh, to know this calendaring, okay, uh, in our email program. So it's basically linked together. So you can see this is my Outlook and I have the calendar here. Okay, when I go to the calendar, I have different meetings, I have different activities uh, during this month. Okay, I have classes that I have to schedule here. Uh, although I'm not seeing my classes at uh, IT. Yeah, I think this is seven. Yeah, IT two, IT section two and IT section one today at 10 to 12 and one to three. You can see that there. I'll just go to my email. Okay, so that's our exam will use the Gmail calendar. Okay, so again, you do the practice. You will know how to use this. If you have a Gmail calendar also, you can practice or Gmail, uh, 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 you have a Gmail account, you can practice through that. Okay, creating an appointment is like setting up a meeting on Microsoft Teams or Outlook Calendar. As I said to you, you can practice this on your own. Uh, now, appointments is different from uh, meeting. It's like your, you can, uh, what is appointment, what is meeting in, um, Outlook, okay, let me just show you the difference. When you say appointment, appointment is like yourself, you're making a schedule for yourself. If it is a meeting, then you're involving somebody else. You have to meet, okay, meaning both of you will agree. So his calendar and your calendar will, should be the same, okay? When you do appointment, it's just you, your calendar alone. Technically, that's the definition of that in uh, uh, in emails, okay, in email calendars, okay? So let's proceed. Uh, now, recurring, recurring means it is repeating every week. So I made my appointments in uh, Microsoft Teams calendar or uh, my auto calendar to be repeating, okay, until the end of the term, okay? Once the term ends and I don't have those meetings anymore. Okay, working with multiple calendars. I'm not sure if I had set up my calendar to be, to have different calendars. Let me check. Yeah, I have other calendar that you can see from here. Okay, but I'm not using that anymore. I'm just showing you. Uh, and I can link my calendar with uh, the other calendars at Geotech. Okay, meaning different person's calendar. Okay, so this is just an example. So for you to grasp the concept of uh, working with multiple calendars. Okay, so as I said, mentioned earlier that your calendar can be linked to another people's, another person's calendar or another staff's calendar. Uh, you can create the calendar for Geotech. You can have your personal calendar and then they can be linked together, okay? So that's how uh, lesson, that's what lesson number 16 is. Uh, again, what we learned is we recognize various email programs. We have the Gmail and the Outlook, which is important here uh, in IC3. Uh, we, un we understood how an email address is structured. We understand a little bit of email etiquette. So as we said, make it more professional, especially when you are talking to your teachers or emailing your teachers and different staff at Geotech. Or when you want to send an email to different companies, to different uh, ministry and so on. Create and send a new message to one or more recipients. Understand how to attach items to a message. Recognize when to reply, reply to all or forward message. 
understand understand how to create a signature, understand how to deal with spam or junk email. We also manage mail for deletion or archiving. We understood how to manage contacts now. We understood how to create single and recurring events or appointments. And we manage how to share calendars. Okay, I can share my calendar to anybody. Let me just go back, for example, this one. Okay, there is a share calendar button here. Okay, and that's it. Okay, I'll not go into details with that. So just I told you, you practice with the G metrics and you will find that some of the questions are very important topics here. So with that, this is lesson number 16 uh, or lesson number three of module C, Living Online. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for uh, for tuning in or staying with me. Uh, watch out for our next lessons, for our next videos, and see you. Ciao.